Luke 15, famous passage, verse 11. The Bible says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. This is the Lord Jesus, one of the most beloved and well-known parables in the Bible. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants." And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. I want to take my text mainly from the part of this story found in verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said. I'm going to preach this morning on the madness of sin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to preach your word, and I pray your spirit come down and bear witness to the truth of it. And Amen. Lord, it's absolutely true. And Lord, I have to pray with Jacob as we studied in Sunday school this morning. I'm not worthy of the least of thy mercies that you showed to me, and you sure have. But Lord, I pray that in spite of my weakness, for whatever reason you put me in the ministry for this, I pray, Lord, that you bless the the preaching of your word today, and I pray we learn some things to make us understand ourselves better, but mainly know and love you better. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I want to say this morning, just real simply, sin makes men crazy. You lost your mind when you live in sin. Amen. If you haven't trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're terribly foolish. If you continue in sin, it's a horrible tragedy that you are headed for. Of men on this earth, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9.3, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Well, you know what's under the sun is this earth. <laughs> that there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that, they go to the dead. A paraphrase of that would be, people are stupid and then they die. <laughs> I mean, that's just what it says. The heart of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live and after that they go to the dead. They're just stupid and then they die. But notice what happened with the prodigal here in verse 17. He came to himself Amen. and thought some reasonable thoughts. Now, when we preach these things, we often say, as, as Dr. Ruckman did who taught us, uh, don't go to the far country thinking, oh, that's fine. I'll just turn around and repent like the prodigal did. Most of them never make it back. Amen. Amen. You go to the far country, you'll probably die there. Amen. But it is true that there are exceptional cases that uh, come to their senses and, and get back. It is true that the dying thief died in those last moments or hours of his life, uh, was saved, I mean, in those last moments or hours of his life, uh, but most people that wait till that point, no. they don't get it. There are exceptions, so you know it's possible, but there are very few exceptions, so you know it ain't likely. 
you go to the far country, you probably ended your chance. I didn't say you had. I said probably. Statistically speaking, the Amen. chances are good you will not make it back. Don't right. go. Amen. It's possible. But our God can work miracles, and he certainly does. Amen. But there's a reason they're called miracles. Amen. Good call. Because most people don't get them. It's a miracle when you do. Many times this foolish ignorance is illustrated in God's word by this word picture of darkness. The Bible says the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. John 8, uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you're living your life and what you're trying isn't bringing you joy, it isn't bringing lasting happiness, it isn't bringing you closer to the Lord, it isn't giving you fulfillment, it is not satisfying, you know what the problem is? You're stumbling around in darkness trying to find something permanent. Yeah. Let me tell you how to get that fixed. Get close to Jesus, the light of the world. When the light of the world is there, all of a sudden you can see real good. Now our text says that the prodigal son came to himself. Sometimes we shorten this to came to. I've heard people, you know, be in accidents and things where they were unconscious for a short while. They said, and when I came to, I was laying there on the grass and all these people around me asking, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> and sometimes some people in sin find themselves sort of like they came to. Amen. It's like they were out of their mind. They were, we say, beside themselves. They were not all there. And they came to, and that's what happened to him. Implying before this moment, he, he was a little bit out of his mind. Now, the pig feeding job had been there for some time. But it suddenly dawned on him where he was and what he was doing, as if someone shined a bright light for the first time, so he could clearly see where he was. Here's your bright light. Amen. The entrance of thy words giveth light. Amen. It giveth understanding unto the simple. You know why you keep doing stuff? It's got you on drugs, got you drunk, and got you unhappy, and got you with no fulfillment, and got you without the joy of the Lord and the permanence of his powerful presence you in darkness you're not shining the spotlight of the word of God on it Jesus is the light and the word of God is the light now even those of us that are saved still sin and therefore have some places where it's pretty dark where we're crazy poor things that are lost have a lot more Right now, we're talking about the madness of sin. We're talking about how sin makes people crazy. Let's look at madness or craziness described. The first uh, thing we'll say about it is it has weakening of the intellectual powers. Fewer and fewer people have the sense that people used to have. It used to be that you could stand up and preach a sermon or give a lecture, and that thing could run an hour or two, and people would sit there and listen to it. That's true. I guarantee if you go over 30 minutes now, you've lost. <laughs> and I'll admit, I was raised on television. I have a hard time going past 30 minutes myself. But nowadays, our YouTube videos and our TikTok videos are a lot shorter than that. I was talking to a preacher just yesterday. And we was talking about the constant technology and how it's messed up society. And I began to go down the road of, yeah, they're seeing a lot of dirty worldly stuff. Yeah, they don't need that. That's bad for them. And he said, yeah, that's true. He said, but the thing I've been thinking about here lately is they can't carry on a 15-minute 15, 15 conversation with nobody yes. without pulling out that silly phone. No. Uh, what's the problem? Their, power, their intellectual powers aren't even where they can focus for 30 minutes. Amen. I remember preachers when I was growing up Lamenting the fact that there's 30 minute television programs and that's about all the attention span you have. It's worse than that now. But I've said all that to say this 
Your intellectual powers are weakened when you allow sin to run your lives. You don't understand. You can't consider. You can't judge. You can't reflect. You can't meditate. Thy word hath been my meditation all the day, the Bible says. Now, of course, these are made even worse with addictions like alcohol or drugs or sex or pornography or luxury and gluttony. You know, we probably don't say enough about that. Yeah. Here in America, it's, it's ridiculous how soft and easy and luxurious our lives are. Oh, yeah. my. If our mattress isn't perfect, buddy, we're ready to spend hundreds of dollars and get a more perfect mattress. Oh, yeah. Do you know how happy people in ages gone by would, would be to get one of our sorry mattresses? That's true. And don't make me wrong. I'm, I'm not preaching down at anybody. I'm the same way. I'm spoiled. Our, if our couches and recliners aren't just perfect, boy, we're ready for another one. If our food isn't just exactly to our liking, we are used to luxury, we're used to gluttony, and how much of it is there? Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. we have plenty. Yes. And the more you just sit and think, what do I want right now? What can I do to get the air conditioner where I'm just the perfect amount of cool, or the heater where I'm just the perfect amount of hot, or the chair where it's just perfectly comfortable, or the entertainment where I'm just perfectly entertained, We're, or the one where my ball team wins, or my romance happens, or my whatever it is you're dreaming of, whatever it is you're after, you want something to be perfect just for you. Why? We're spoiled. Yeah. Amen. And whenever all you're doing is thinking about what is the thing that would make me feel the most comfortable, mm -hmm. you know what you're not doing? You're not concentrating or meditating on things that matter more. Weakening of the intellectual powers is when you're crazy. Another time is when passion rules instead of reason. Act on impulse, not according to a plan, nor a set of rules, nor a set of standards, nor a set of principles, or according to cost, or according to consequences. You just do what you feel like right then in that moment. You know who does that? Crazy people. You need some structure. You need some rules. About 20 years ago when the Bible believers was all making fun of the fundamentalists for all their rules and everything, as much as, I'm, as I identify with the Bible believing Baptists, I was saying, now wait a minute. <laughs> Those old fundamentalists knew what they was doing. You wait till you get a society with no rules and no structure and no outward standards, you're going to have a mess. Amen. And my prophecy has come true. Oh, buddy. Man, you better get you some rules and say, you better quit just whatever you feel like in the moment. Yeah. I know those things are aggravating sometimes. I've heard people complain many a time about boot camp. But you know what? Getting those discipline and those rules and that structure in you where you get used to going by a formula and going by the plan, that'll save your neck one of these days when you're in combat. That's correct. Let me tell you, Christian, you're in combat. Yes. There is an enemy. And if you're not disciplined and if you're not used yeah. to doing something by a set of disciplines and standards that don't always make sense to you, you won't last when the devil begins attacking those fiery darts start coming at you. You better have some discipline instead of passion ruling. You won't have any money if you just always spend with no concern about cost. You won't have any health if you just eat without any concern for whether or not it's healthy. Yeah. You won't have any rest if you just rest whenever you feel like it. You can't, the Bible says the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. You stay busy all day, and you'll sleep a whole lot better at night. Passion rules instead of reason. Here's a, here's a good uh, description of a crazy person. They see strange delusions. For example, imagining they're rich when they're broke. You know what the Bible says about Laodicea? Yeah. Thou sayest... I am rich and increased with goods. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Amen. 
Amen. How can you not know that? I'll tell you why. Because this world is busy telling you how great you are and you're on the verge of hell. Amen. That's a problem. In the old days in this country, you didn't have to preach that people was lost. They knew that. You showed them the plan of salvation. I've heard Bob Jones Sr. talk about how in the old days, all those old country people knew that they was lost. And they were so glad to hear the plan of salvation, how to get saved. Now in our day, we're ten times dirtier than they were back then. And you can't convince anybody they're lost. We've told them how great they are and built up their self-righteousness so much. They don't even think they need a Savior. Amen. You know what that is? Crazy. Dirtier than anybody's ever been in the history of this country and think you're good. You ought to be hanging your head. Amen. When the prodigal came back to himself, he hung his head and said, Dad, make me your slave. <laughs> that was when he had his sense about him. When he was ready to go off and do his own thing was when he was nuts. <laughs> Dr. Ruckman, before he died, said the greatest lesson he ever learned in his whole life was that he didn't have the sense to plan his own life. That was in God's hands. Yeah. That's a greater lesson, as much as he talked about the King James Bible, he said that was a greater lesson than, than the King James Bible. Let me tell you something, folks. You need to learn that you can't plan your own life. Amen. If you make your own decisions, I'll tell you exactly where you'll end up. One in the far country and two in a hog pen. Yes. That is where your own decisions lead. Let me tell you where God leads. Staying under rightful authority. You want to be your own authority? I hope you like slop. <laughs> and you will. You'll develop a taste for it. I'll give you that. Most Americans have a real good taste they've developed for slop. Amen. That's a good point. You'll see strange delusions. You'll be imagining you're rich like Laodicea or like this prodigal. Or you'll be thinking you're secure like the one world government people. The Bible says, uh, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You know what they're doing? They're saying, oh, we got to have peace. we got to have peace. Let's all get under the United Nations and have all this peace. Oh, we got all the nations working together. Peace and safety. What do they get? Sudden destruction. <laughs> what did they do? Left God out. They said in the Genesis, they said, hey, let's build us a big tower to show that we're all together. God said, I'm fixing to scatter you, and you don't even understand each other's speech. It's true. Strange delusions. They're rich or they're secure or they're invincible. That's a big one. Oh, man, how many stories could we tell of a young man? Grew up and got some muscle and got thinking he was strong and got in a bar and doing things and saying things he shouldn't. And somebody wore him out. <laughs> oh, man. Luke uh, chapter 12, And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? This guy worked, and I, and I appreciate good hard work. I really do. This guy worked and worked and worked and worked, and here was his problem. He got proud of it. And he all those barns was full, and he said, Well, hey, I've got much goods laid up for many years. I'm invincible now. <laughs> I'm going to take my ease and eat, drink, and be merry. And the Lord said, no, you're not even going to make it through the night. <laughs> Let me tell you what's more important than how full your barns are. How close you and God are. That, that's, what, that's what you better concentrate on. Amen. I'm not against hard work. I, I try to work as hard as I can. I try to teach that. The Bible teaches being industrious and diligent. Believe those things. But don't take pride in them. Realize if the Lord's blessed you because of your hard work, it was the Lord blessing you because of your hard work. There's plenty of people that work just as hard as you and sometimes harder and don't have the blessings you have. The difference is the blessing of God. See, strange delusions. They get thinking they're invincible. Psalm 73, Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, they cast them and 
Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. He's talking about these people that were so sure they had it made. And the Lord had them in a slippery place. I often tell the story when I was a little boy and I was at my Aunt Sudie's and they've got that little branch going by their house. And she and I were out throwing some hay to the cattle and some things and we were walking through this branch and I was enjoying walking on those stones in that branch. She said, Bobby, they're slick. <laughs> You're going to fall. I said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> sure enough, boy, I hit a slick one in a minute and down I went. You know what I was? I was in slippery places. That muddy moss on those stones gets real slick sometimes. Madness is described. You have weak intellectual powers. Your passion rules instead of your reason. You see strange delusions. You're, it's proven by what you choose and what you reject. Some people, I can tell, are crazy by what kind of a wife they choose. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to say that. But the Bible says a prudent wife is from the Lord. Amen. There are some people I can tell they're crazy by what kind of a husband they choose. Uh, death or life. Hey, the Bible has a place where the prophet says in the Old Testament, I set before you life or death. Therefore, choose life. Hey, there's a bunch of people that choose things that we know kills them. Danger or safety. Let me tell you something. You, we, we read the statistics here on Wednesday night recently about how sexually transmitted disease uh, chances are going through the roof all over the country, including Tennessee. You don't know what you're going to get. Amen. Say. We've read the statistics about how all these drugs everybody's trying with, trying around, has been uh, laced with fentanyl and killing a bunch of people. Uh, you may not just be smoking a little pot. You may not be messing around with something you can handle. It may have, it may have, what do they call it? It may have more bang for your buck. <laughs> it may have something you don't need to be fooling with. There's, you, Brother Ron preaches that great message. You can't predict the consequences of a bad decision. You might choose a bad decision and say, well, I'm going to choose to smoke a little pot here, and it might have a whole lot more than pot in it. You might think, well, I'm going to get away from mom and daddy here, and you may be getting right into something you don't you don't want any part of. No. You're in a whole lot worse trouble than just getting away from mom and daddy. You may be, I don't know, I, I can't think of all that. You may think, well, I, it's not that I'm you know, turning against God. It's just I've been lonely too long, so I'm going to mess around with this person over here I think is attractive. You may be getting more than you bargained for. The devil puts all kinds of added ingredients in the sin that you choose to have to take part in. Uh, they're, they're killers. Killers in many cases. Evil or good? Body or soul? Temporary or eternal? And above all, hell or heaven? You can tell by the choices somebody's making whether they're nuts or not. Uh, it's also proven by how somebody lives, especially if they're violent and incoherent. Versus making sound decisions. You know, okay, that's a, that's a crazy person. There's, there's something. He's got bats in the belfry. There's something going on under underneath the surface there that apparently I don't know anything about. Here's a good one. Uninfluenced by counsel. Once they start messing up, some people that love them, brother or sister, a mama or a daddy, some friends that they've had for a good long time, sits down, has a talk with them, says, hey, you're, you're not doing right here. This isn't going to be good for you. Hey, I know him. Don't mess around with him. I know her. Don't mess around with her. And I know you get in trouble talking about people. Sometimes you care about somebody and you want to keep them out of trouble. Amen. And all of a sudden the person just ignores it. Yeah. Cuckoo. Cuckoo, cuckoo. When somebody that loves you enough to die for you tries you tries to talk you out of a course of action and you close off to them, you ought to think, wait a minute, this person loves me enough to die for me. They're probably telling me the truth. It's probably that they're not just, you know, scared to death I might have a few minutes of fun. There's probably more to it. 
uninfluenced by counsel. Here's a good one. A lot of times they get convinced that other people are crazy. <laughs> I, I know it's tragic, but I can't help but laugh when I think about some of these. A sluggard says that workers are crazy. <laughs> That's true. I was reading about some, some of the missionaries that went to the South Pacific. And uh, on the South Pacific Islands, it was just nuts how degraded those people were. As they even pulled up to the islands, totally nude women started swimming out to them, saying, we are women, we are women, <laughs> as if they couldn't tell. Then they got there, and they couldn't get anybody to even work. They wouldn't even work. And the people that did work, you know what they said? They said, oh, you're so stupid. You do all the work. We just lay around all day. They thought they were crazy for working. The ones that held off and wouldn't fall into sin, they thought they were crazy for living righteous. And when you live righteous in a messed up day like today, people will think you're crazy. Boy, on judgment day, you wait till God lines up the fools and see which line you're in. Amen. One that lives according to this word of God is the one to be in, in agreement with the Lord. They get thinking that others are crazy. The drunk says the sober are crazy. All the time making a joke. Who was it? I think it was W.C. Fields. Uh, got an infection from some tainted water. And he was bad to drink all the time. All the time bragging about his drinking. And uh, when he saw that that infection was taking away his health, he said, I knew that infernal liquid would one day kill me. <laughs> Trying to make a joke about drinking water because he wanted liquor. The drunk says the sober are crazy. The worldly person thinks the heavenly minded are crazy. They love to go around saying, well, he's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's the heavenly minded that do some earthly good. There was nobody more heavenly minded than Jesus, and you tell me who's done more earthly good than Jesus. Amen. What should be said is, you're so earthly minded you can't do earthly Amen. good. <laughs> That's what you should say. The sinners think the righteous are crazy. The liberals think the conservatives are crazy. And on and on we can go. Acts chapter 26, Paul is talking about the gospel that Christ should suffer and be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. Here's Paul, spoken to by God, given a, 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 a commission directly from the Lord himself, and Festus thinks he's crazy. Acts chapter 22. And he said, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word and lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. They thought Paul needed to be killed for what? Preaching the truth. Plenty of our Baptist forefathers were killed for preaching the truth. This world, is this vile world a friend of grace to help me unto God? Well, I know. That's madness described. Now let's look at madness illustrated. It's found here in our text. Uh, this young man is a mad man until he comes to himself. The first thing I want to point out about a mad person is they're self-centered. They're self-centered. Uh, the younger of them said to his father, what? Give me. No mention of the father, no mention of the family, no mention of the reputation, no mention of anything else, just give me. In the last days, men shall be lovers of their own selves. Amen. You know what they tell you? It is all about you. Yeah. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Do things for yourself. When somebody's been going through this world's therapy, they, th they say things like, oh, I love myself. I like who I am now. Cuckoo, cuckoo, <laughs> cuckoo. Whenever you think about self all the time, you know what you'll do? You'll go crazy. Amen. You'll say, Father, give me. Mm -hmm. You remember that little routine Dr. Ruckman had that I've stolen from him where I talk about people thinking about themselves even in church. Did he see me? Did he smile at me? Did he laugh at my joke? Did he shake my hand? Did he pat me on the back? Did he recognize what I did? Mm -hmm. You sit and think about self, 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 self. 
Did I get what I wanted to eat? Am I comfortable? Am I hot? Am I cold? Am I sleepy? Am I tired? Do I need to work? Do I have enough money? Do I me, 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 I, 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 I? Yeah. Father, give me! You know what that is? That's somebody that's crazy. A crazy person always sits and thinks about, how do I feel? Hey, what about, what did Jesus do for you? Hey, what about poor lost sinners dying going to hell? Anybody ever think about that? What about poor people that have had it way rougher than you, that maybe you can be a blessing and a help to? I'm not saying never think about yourself, but there's something wrong if all you do is think about yourself. Amen. And when you're first introduced to a character in the Bible, the first words out of his mouth are, Father, give me, that's a real good indication. That's who you're dealing with. Uh, number one, he's self-centered. Number two is rejection of restraint. They don't want any rules. They don't want any standards. They don't want to be told what to do. So when his father divided unto them his living, what did he do? Did he move next door? <laughs> A little too close to the rules. He took his journey into a far country. He wanted out from all of daddy's mean, strict rules. Uh, let me tell you about this country. It used to have some rules. Amen. Just turn on your television and look at the television shows from the 1950s and compare them to today. You talk about anything goes. Yeah. Oh, word. Yeah. They wouldn't have dared to use some of that language. It's on there these days. Rejection of restraint. He took his journey into a far country. All right, another uh, sign of a crazy person. They're slothful. No profitable labor. He wasted his substance. Well, what about all those paychecks he was earning as he was spending that? It doesn't mention any. <laughs> no paycheck. And if he did, he was spending that too. As a matter of fact, the word prodigal doesn't mean somebody that leaves mom and daddy. I used to think because the prodigal left the father, I thought a prodigal was somebody that left their mom and dad. I looked up the word one day. That's not what it means. Prodigal means somebody that spends too much. Mm -hmm. We don't usually use it that way. We usually think of somebody leaving their home. Yeah. When we say the prodigal son, we say the one that's spending too much son. Do you know any Americans like that? Right. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> of course you do. Slothful, though. He wasn't uh, replenishing it. That... Um, that foolish son that was always self-centered. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 too, A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Yeah. Oh, how they love to sit and talk about themselves and how they feel and what's happened to them. And what is going to happen to them. And it's me, me, I, I, I. And don't, don't misunderstand. I understand. You, you read the Word of God and you go through things in life, you'll have a, you'll have a healthy understanding of yourself. You will. But when that's all you want to talk about, and, and along the lines of slothfulness, the Bible says in Proverbs 16, the, uh, 26, 16, the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Proverbs 18, 9, he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. You see the connection? Slothful in their work and wasting what they've got. Papa used to tell us, if you don't take care of what you got, you'll never have nothing. Amen. <laughs> Well, he was right there. Yeah. And the two go together. Oh, yeah. You get slothful in your work and you waste what you've got. You know what happened to the prodigal son? He got slothful in his work and he wasted what he did have. Wasted his substance. Then uh, he does it with a crowd. He wasted his substance how? With riotous living. That means it's with a crowd. Exodus 23, 2 says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in cause to decline after many to rest judgment. You don't do things in a cloud or just because there's many people, a crowd or because there's many people doing it. Right. You do right. You know why you have a hard time getting people to do right these days? Because nobody else is. Yeah. One of the old uh, arguments 
when parents trying to teach their kids to stay out of trouble is, but dad, everyone's doing it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Amen. If everybody's doing it, that's one of the main proofs. You don't need to touch it. Amen. Everybody's on TikTok. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everybody's on social media. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody likes this kind of music. Mm -hmm. Tells me what I need to know. Everybody's wearing this these days. Preach it, brother. <laughs> if everybody's doing it, you better not. Because everybody's about to go off a cliff if I understand the prophetic scriptures at all. Riotous. Let me tell you something else about a crowd. There's murder in there. There's adultery in there. When the brother describes what the prodigal is doing, he said... My brother comes who has devoured his living, devoured thy living with harlots. The bigger the crowd, the more filth involved. Amen. <clears throat> Better look out. Uh, the people in our cities, they've lost their minds. Don't get me wrong, thank God for the exceptions. But America's major cities, they have no idea whether you should kill a baby or let it live, whether somebody's a male or a female whether you should leave a business alone or break in and loot it. They've lost their minds. Yeah. You know what the problem is? they followed a multitude to do evil. Mm -hmm. If you doubt it, just pull up the news coverage in some of our major cities. It's crazy. Whether you should go to a bathroom or, or just out on a sidewalk. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, this yeah. stuff is on national news. Amen. You want know what they've done? They're just doing like everybody else. All right, now, thank God, let's get to the good part. <laughs> let's look at madness repented of. We've seen madness described. We've seen madness illustrated. Now let's look at madness repented of. All right, the first thing about madness repented of, it's personal, alone. As long as you're with the crowd, you'll tend to, you'll tend to follow them. You get alone to get right with God. You get with God. He was in a hog pen, and that's a bad place to be, and it stinks and everything. But from where he had been, it wasn't all that worse. Let me tell you about the devil's crowd. They stink pretty bad. <laughs> and the hog pen was just another step in that progression. But when he got alone, that was when he got thinking. He said, wait a minute. I'm starving and the servants of my daddy aren't even starving. Genesis 32, the Bible says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. You know what will happen? When you get right with God, you'll be left alone. You and the Lord will be there. Amen. I told you about when Billy Kelly got saved. And he came down to the altar and somebody got down there to talk to him and try to lead him to the Lord. And he, he just didn't even speak to the guy. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, I didn't have a problem with him. I had a problem with the Lord. <laughs> I didn't need to deal with him. I needed to deal with the Lord. When you get right with God, it'll be something between you and him. If you're getting right with God because mama or daddy is telling you to, and don't get me wrong, I believe that God gave us mamas and daddies. I don't know where I'd be without mine. But when I got saved, mama and daddy couldn't save me. Amen. That's between me and the Lord. It's personal. Isaiah 5, Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Daniel chapter 10, Therefore I was left alone. And saw this great vision. You know why sometimes we're not seeing visions that the Lord would make available to us? Because we never get alone. As soon as we get alone, we get on our phone. As soon as we get alone, we look for a friend. As soon as we get alone, we fill our ears and our minds and our hearts with entertainment. Hey, once in a while, get alone with God and just meditate. Amen. Isaac was meditating in a field at even, and that was it when his bride showed up. His whole life changed be surprised what you get with meditating with God. Personal. I'll tell you another time that you'll get repenting, repent of your madness is when you have a realization of hunger. Now, why in the world this guy had to go this long before he realized I am about to perish with hunger. But the problem is you get used to being hungry and it gets feeling normal to you. That's true. It ain't supposed to feel normal for you to be unsatisfied. Jesus satisfies. 
Bread of life so rich and free, untold wealth that never faileth, my Redeemer is to me. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. There have been times in my life where I hadn't had something for a long time, and when I got it, it was a blessing to me, and I didn't even realize how bad I was needing it. Amen. That's the way the Lord is. Realization of hunger. Realization of desperation. It said in verse 16, He would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. He said, man, I'd be happy to get some of that slop, and I can't even get that. Let me tell you how crazy you get in sin. You'll be sitting there eating slop and not even realize it. Yes. And not till the slop is taken do you realize how hungry you are. Yeah. Bobby Utley preaches a great sermon called, You'll Never Miss the Water until the well runs dry. <laughs> and boy, there's a lot of truth to that. As long as people keep providing, you'll think, oh, I'm fine. And even if it's slop they're giving you, you'll think, oh, you're fine. And no man gave unto him. He finally realized, well, I, I need something. Realization of desperation. Here's another good one. Desire for the father. That father that he was wanting to get away from. That father that he was willing to take his inheritance and not move next door, but plumb to a far country so he didn't have to look at that guy anymore. All of a sudden, daddy didn't look so bad. <laughs> Let me tell you about this world. It is not your friend. Amen. They do not care about you like a loving Amen. father. Amen. And of course, I'm talking about a <clears throat> heavenly father mainly. He didn't say, you know what? I'm going to protest for my rights. From now on, all the farm hands need to be fed at least pinto beans and cornbread. Amen. Boy, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he didn't say that. He didn't protest for better conditions. He didn't say, well, these pig pens, there's too much mud in them and they stink. I want these pig pens fixed up. I'm going to organize a group and we're going to do that. No, that wasn't what he was desiring. He wasn't saying, well, wait a minute. I've been slopping hogs in this pig pen a while. I want a better job. You treat me right. You know what he said? Abba, Father. Daddy, come get me. Man, I can't ever even say these words, man, without hardly crying, without crying when I think about my little Nathan. That time he was having to lay there and let him lance his ear. Oh, man, that hurt and he saw how that was hurting him, and he looked up, and there I was, and he said, Daddy, pick me up. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You get hurting bad enough, you're going to be saying, Daddy, pick me up. Amen. You know who will pick you up? Daddy. Amen. You know who couldn't care less how you hurt? Your so-called friends. <laughs> it's involved in all that sin with you. Oh, uh, now, you don't misunderstand. As long as you've got some of the father's inheritance to still spend with them, oh, they love you right then. <laughs> <laughs> but when the money's gone and your eardrums are hurting, you're wanting daddy to pick you up. Yeah. Uh, my little, I say my little cousin Travis, he's a big old man now, but when he was, boy, when he sure enough was my little cousin Travis, he was on the other side of the fence, and here come a big old dog fixing to get him. And I mean, that dog was bigger than he was, poor thing. And that dog was barking and showing those teeth. And he just looked over, saw his daddy, saw what was happening, and he reached up, and my Uncle Barry picked him up, and just a second or two before that dog got there, got him out of there. And let me tell you something. The devil, as a roaring lion, goeth about seeking whom he may devour. Reach up for daddy. Yes. Amen. He doesn't want you to Nobody gets devoured by a lion and lives to tell about it. The devil is wanting to tear you up. Picture in your mind a lion devouring somebody. What are you picturing? It ain't fun. Now, yes, he makes it appear fun, so you will be there so he can eat you. <laughs> but it is not fun, I assure you. He gets a desire for the father. One of these days, one of these days, when you're in the far country, you're going to be wishing Daddy was there to pick you up. Amen. Repentance. He goes from give me what's mine to let me earn 
Let me tell you what that is. That's repentance. That's a change of mind. That's a completely different attitude. Father, give me versus let me be like one of your slaves. <laughs> different mindset, man. You say, well, we got a bunch of Americans. They're not used to being told what to do. If the dark clouds on the horizon are showing what I think they're showing, yeah with the digital currency and, and government control and $30 trillion in debt and God knows what, they soon <coughs> going to have a complete change of mind. Yes, they will. You want to see a revival in this country? That may be about our best chance for it. That's true. You know why? Because they go from give me to I'm happy to earn. <laughs> Let me be your servant. From a far country to daddy's farm. From harlots to family. I'll tell you something else. He went to humility. Instead of give me what's mine, I'm the son of the I'm the heir apparent. I'm the son of the rich owner, landowner here. He can't he said, make me a servant. Let me tell you the beautiful result of madness that's been repented of. Look at verse 24. Look at the last word. Mary. You know what is never used in the description of the time that he is in the far country? Mary. He is never happy there. Let me tell you about the far country. You will never be happy there. Amen. There is pleasure in sin for a season, but there is never any lasting joy there. But when he got home to the Father, back under all those rules, he got nice clothes. He got singing and dancing. He got a fatted calf instead of hog slop. And he was, dare I say it, happy. I think this world is giving you a bone steer. Yes, it is. I think they're pointing you in the wrong direction. But there are plenty of Americans, Christians, Bible-believing Baptists, I hate to say it, that are going to have to go out in that far country and let it prove it to them. Yeah. We now have 6,000 years of human history. It's never worked before. I have a sermon where I go through many cases of literature where people talked about going out into the world and being miserable and being miserable, and being miserable, and trying all the things that this world offers and not liking it. It is not, a, this is not a new concept I preach today. You know what the prodigal had here when he got back to Pappy's farm, as Hank Williams says in that song, Honky Tonk Blues? When he got back to Pappy's farm, you know what they were doing? They were merry. You know what that is? That's madness repented of. All right, today we saw an unpopular truth. Men are sinners, therefore men are foolish. And the extent of their sin, especially the sin of not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, is the extent of their insanity. Now, I don't get any pleasure out of calling you or anybody else crazy any more than I do admitting my own stupidity, and God knows I've had plenty of it. But God's Word clearly teaches that we're all sinners, so we're all idiots. <laughs> and it's true. Our life decisions are like somebody stumbling in darkness. But the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So when we get saved, a big light comes on. And it corrects a lot of our ignorant ways. And then the closer we get to God and his word, and the further we get from sin, the more light comes on and the more darkness is dispelled. And we can see more things and correct more things. Finally, thank God in the resurrection all sin is removed, all the lights are on, and we are known as we are known. If you're lost, I want to say this. You're living a foolish life. Don't be that way anymore. Go to the Father. There's a devil after you. Reach up and let Daddy pick you up. If you're saved, but you've been living in sin, you're stuck in some addiction, you're stuck in some bad habit, reach up and let Daddy pick you up. Set up some safeguards. Get out of the far country and come out of that sin. And I'll tell you what you'll find when you get back to the Father's house. You'll be merry. You'll be happy. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. Lord, I pray that you'll take these.